Yes, indeed. Now for something a little different. We're live on KEXP right now, kexp.org, all around the world. It's the afternoon show. My name is Larry Mizell Jr. So happy right now to be joined in the live room by Asheville, North Cacalac's own Wednesday. Wednesday, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> live and direct here at KEXP. That was Twin Plagues, title track of the album that just came out last month, right? Yeah, that's the one. Fantastic. Or it came out, um, yeah, it came out a bit ago. Okay. Um, oh, that was 2021. Yes, yeah. she's right. <laughs> sorry. But we released like a covers album kind of recently. Okay. Might have been what I was thinking of. Right on. Um, Sandy, you ready for this one? Oh, yeah. Can't make direct eye contact. <laughs> that's all, all right, let's all count it off. One, two, three. song 
Cody's only from Twin Plagues. What a beautiful wall of sound. Loving the lap still. Yes, indeed. Wednesday, live on KEXP. It's Wednesday. <laughs> I did something interesting on that one. I forgot the first half of the first word, but I got the second half of the first word. I just had to oh. like acknowledge that before we continued. Appreciate your, your disclosure, your honesty. Yeah. So brave. Thank you for being here. You guys are killing it. Wednesday going to be live at the Showbox tonight here in Seattle, April 28th. Never know this. I can keep the wind. 
Wednesday, live on KEXP. Wow, what a sound. So raw and uh, crunchy and tender. And uh, your master of mastery brevity, I love as well. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you'll have to remind me what that means. So just like, those songs are like, what, three minutes tops? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like great, you know, pop music, like Buddy Holly school. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I love it. No, yeah, it's like, I love it. I, I always like a new compliment that I haven't heard. I appreciate nice. that the most. So I like to, I like to, yeah. Wait till you hear our new so single. Much. Awesome. <laughs> Only eight minutes long. Yeah, oh, our next yeah. song that we put out is eight it's minutes. It's time to prog out eventually. Yeah, yeah we're going to be called anti brevity. Okay, there you go. You got to rebel against these new compliments when you get them. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are from Asheville, which just seems like an incredibly supportive community. Um, yeah. Tell me about your hometown and, you know, what was it like to come together as a band there? Yeah, so, um, I wanted more than anything to be in a band forever and ever, but I didn't um, think I could do it for a while until I was in that community that I was getting the support from, honestly, my sophomore year of high school or college at UNCA where we all met. Um, yeah, I basically had a friend at school make a recording for me um, on like the first songs I ever recorded and then um, met Alan who joined the band to play my sister's birthday party one year and we all met through... Um, like Zandy and Margo would throw like huge house shows at their house. Jake was in a bunch of bands, like 50 different bands at the time. And yeah, through that community, we definitely like met and realized we're into the same stuff. Gosh, I curse like a sailor. I'm really happy. I'm going to keep thinking about it. But um, um, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just really bonded and connected and it just fell together, honestly. Yeah. And then me and Zandy also worked at a venue in Asheville called The Moth Light, which was like our stomping grounds. We were there every minute we could, and it closed during the pandemic, so ah, long live The Moth Light. But yeah. <laughs> right on, and what, it sounds like such a dynamic scene, just all the settings that everybody's coming out of that you're talking yeah. about. Um, and I know that the, like, the music you love is what brought everybody together uh, initially, um, kind of that eclectic mix of 90s and country rock. How did you kind of find that you all shared these, these loves of certain music. Yeah, you went, go ahead, oh, I was going to say, I feel like we got lucky in a lot of ways. Like, we, we all kind of came to the band out of a need for certain instruments or just wanting, like, a certain vibe of a person to join our sphere, but it just so happened that we all kind of wanted to get louder and more 90s sound. You know, it was just we yeah. wanted that grungy sound because it started out very poppy like pop yeah. indie well, and I just then, thought that was the only music I was allowed to make for no a long I time. totally get it I completely yeah. understand but yeah we I feel like once we came together and started really giving ourselves the freedom to do what we wanted it became so much easier to play music together and play this yeah. kind of music that we really like and then after touring together and playing music in the car like that's more when we realized like oh wait we yeah I see where we're all why we're all like having this chemistry in this way that is happening so naturally also, like being a unit for what, like four years or whatever, I feel like we kind of, you start to grow 
together or yeah. like sync up in a sort of way. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's really nice too. That time you spend together on the road, the music you listen to, uh, I mean, that's where it's all at, right? And you kind of yeah. fall in on a psychic level even before you hit the stage. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Last night in the van, we were listening to uh, those old school funny sound effects literally exactly well the, the thing was we oh and then dubstep remixes oh, of oh, uh, God. Cl- yeah. either classical music or video game music oh, well we were mix. we yeah. had a 10 hour drive yesterday and like 8 hours of it was made in silence and then when we finally put music on we were like let's listen to the worst possible <laughs> things we can find for our brain. And because we just go chaos mode when you've been in the car that long. Yeah. At the end of every drive that we do, it's like Alan will <laughs> DJ something completely disturbing, just out, usually out of nowhere. We'll have no warning. And then the beat will drop, and then we just have to sit and deal with it for the next hour. <laughs> but some in a good way. way. It, like, puts, it puts us in like a very good, energetic mood whenever nice. we roll into a city. There's a YouTube account called Worst Beats in the World, and I'm excited for their KEXP session, personally. <laughs> wow, the van that sounds like... That was an Alan discovery, sorry. Sounds like boot camp or something, you know? Yeah. Some mental... Uh, it's pretty serious, yeah. It sounds like it. <laughs> Uh, you know, I always found uh, one thing, if you guys can find the same things funny, and you might probably do, comedy makes time fly in, in the car. Mm-hmm, totally. Just a little tip, if you, don't, if you probably already know. Oh, yeah. No, we riff on, like, jokes for, like, way too long. Nice. And once oh, we yeah. get uh, our Weeks. last one that we were on a loop fire is just singing the words... Sloppy Joe for like an hour. Sloppy, sloppy sloppy Joe. Joe. Wait, Wait, is that a thing already? That's that's Adam Sandler. Oh, yeah, we still sing it all the time. Someone made it up. (laughs) Who did this? Yeah, Yeah. who? (laughs) Alan, was that you? Okay, we That's convinced that we original. made that up. But. Original recommendation. I honestly had no, that actually like freaked me out just now when you started doing that. I, I was like Just really being around out. you guys, I'm just tapped in. I you think know that's what, I mean. what it is. I don't think it's our it's boy Adam. Lunch Lady Land. <laughs> lunch Lady Land, exactly. You might hear from, from Adam's lawyers sometimes, so oh. that's, not, that's not on us, sorry. Um, uh, you guys just released a cover uh, mm-hmm. record, as you said, and... Um, you paid tribute to a lot of your influences, Vic Chestnut, Roger Miller, Drive By Truckers. How did you kind of settle on that track list? And have you had any feedback from any of the folks you covered? Yeah, well, a lot of the people we covered are no longer alive. <laughs> so right, that was, right. but I mostly just gathered a bunch of songs um, that I loved singing in the car. Um, cause my voice has a range that's pretty specific. And I was like, okay, I, I know I sound good singing along with these. And then another, a lot of them were songs me and Jake had recorded together, um, over the years. Um, but yeah. And then the, the only people that kind of reached back out to us afterwards were the drive by truckers, which right was on. like mind blowing. Yeah. So exciting. We love them. And actually the night of our Athens show, they were also playing Athens. So some of them came to our show. Literally nice. next door. Yeah, next, yeah, door, next door, door to our venue. And then we went to their show after. Yeah, so yeah. It was like it was the first surreal. stop. And it, felt, it. it felt really, I, I felt, we, I feel like we felt really seen. Yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're big fans of the drive by truckers here. Oh, KXP. Yeah. Nice. Like, yeah. Uh, it, I feel like you guys are highly collaborative when you're writing songs. How does that pro- what does that process look like? Yeah, so I kind of write um, my parts, the, my guitar parts, and my lyrics and vocal melody beforehand, and I basically will send over a voice memo so that my band can kind of like sit with it, and then they just write all their own parts. We kind of like, uh, the last two albums, we kind of just stood in a circle and figured it out together. Um, that's basically it. Anything? It's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of trial and error. I mean, if you look at any of our songs, well, I would say if you look at any of our songs, there's like, we try so many different things, like almost every part of the song, every transition, we've tried like multiple versions of it. Just whenever anyone comes up with an idea, we try to give it a shot. And go from there, basically. Yeah. We end up writing a lot of songs in the studio too. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, we're, we like kind of make an arrangement and then it's in the studio and we don't actually get to hear it right, <laughs> for a while. Right. And we have to like <laughs> listen back to our recordings, like our album recordings to <laughs> figure out a song. Sure. Uh, Carly, I've read that you're, you're a voracious reader and you've kind of uh, transmuted some literary influence like Richard brought again into some of their music. How does that kind of work for you? Yeah, so um, when I find a writer I'm really into, I'm guessing like other people that read, um, you find everything they've ever written sure. and go through it. Um, and it's actually, for my writing, it's not only pieces of books I collect, but like even stuff my friends will say, I'll write it down, or movies or whatever. 
Um, but the way I like to write a lot of the times and the way I really, I don't know if I've ever gotten writer's block for this reason, is I'll take a piece, even a phrase, two words, like uh, our song Toothache, Toothache Sky is about to rain, is a Richard Brodigan line. And then I go the rest of the song from there, just trying to live up to that mm. one line. And it challenges me to write well, and it also um, pays respect to like the people that I have learned from <laughs> from reading. Um, but yeah, that's done us well so far. There's a lot of references like that on our next album. I think I'm just going to keep writing that way because it feels really good. To, what a cool method yeah. of paying tribute and, and staying inspired. It's a good game for any songwriters out there. Yeah, I definitely suggest it for people that feel stuck. Right on. And then, yeah, always like say who you're borrowing from, though, also. Cause, Very important. Yeah, that's what you got you to gotta keep up with that. <laughs> for sure. Uh, and Carly, I know you said your intention... Um, with Twin Plagues was to kind of reckon with high school trauma, uh, memories from that time. How did writing the record help you process all of that? Well, this is, so as soon as my mom heard the record, she called me and she was like, dude, like, are you okay? Um, and I was like, yeah, like if I've written about it, I've processed it enough to write and like sort through it and approach it head on. Um, so it's really just like a way to kind of close the book on a feeling um, because there's a time with grief or trauma or whatever where you can't even like access that part of your brain. So if I go there, I know I've healed. Um, and yeah, next album's like that too. It's a never ending pit of sure. like uh, that kind of stuff to deal with. That's just what life is, but music's helping me get through it. So thank God this is what I'm doing. Yeah. I heard that. And do you have such like a, uh like such a, a coherent intention for every record? Because you guys have dropped, what, four records in the last three years. You're highly prolific. <laughs> um, I don't really, I just write all the time. And then I group songs together that feel like one era and we record them. And I actually didn't, we've recorded a lot of albums and released a lot of music, but it was only until I was trying to describe you to someone that I was like, okay, I'm finally approaching what I imagined I always wanted to do. And Twin Plagues is one step closer and the one we just finished recording is even closer to like, just, I, I'm just learning so much with each record that I think it's really just a growth that we're trying to capture each time as if there was to be one goal. Beautiful. And we're excited to, to witness that growth further. And uh, could you guys introduce yourselves? Yeah, um, I'm Carly Hartsman. I play guitar and I sing in Wednesday. <laughs> Um, I'm Margot Schultz, and I play bass in Wednesday. I'm Zandy Kelmus, and I play lap steel and sing a little bit in Wednesday. I'm Jake Linderman. I play the guitar and sing some in Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Alan Miller. <laughs> I, play the drums in Wednesday. I think this is the vocal mic I was talking about. <laughs> I haven't been saying anything. And they're all going to be at the show box tonight. So go check them out. They're going to be at the Roseland in Portland tomorrow night. Thank you all for coming through. Thank you so oh, much thank for having you so us. Much. Dream come Absolutely. True. Yeah. Right on. KEXP, KEXP.org. If you dig what you see and hear, you can uh, support and like and subscribe. All that good stuff on the YouTube channel. One billion views strong. It all happens with your support. So thank you for that. This is KEXP, KEXP.org. It's the afternoon show. My name is Larry Mizell Jr. And I want to thank you all for being here. Discover new music at listener-powered KEXP.org.